What's going on, you two, bitch, your uh, boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love this video. And subscribe to the channel and comment anything in the comment section to enter your name into the $100 giveaway that I'm going to do on this video because it is MLB opening day. Now, what I am doing is I am doing an early look at the MLB opening day slate. Now, I'll probably do another brush up uh, the day, the night before, like I'll be doing most of the year. So, uh, I will have another one later on, but this is an early look to kind of get everybody on track going. I'm pretty much going to do a full breakdown. I'm going to take a look at what I'm, what I'm liking. I'm going to kind of zoom through it position by position and talk about what I'm liking. And then I'll plug in my five like I normally do, like a high five for baseball. And uh, we'll go from there, all right? So, without further ado, man, MLB opening day. Let's get it. I'm excited for this early vid. Drop a like down below if you haven't already. Greenlightdfs.com to join the squad. Make sure you go hit that up. You can grab the season-long membership right now at greenlightdfs.com. Also, I started a sports bets consultation Patreon, pretty much, where I'll be helping people make sports bets. Um, if you are doing, if you are into that kind of stuff. Uh, search up green light bets on patreon you can join that and get access to the discord where i will be posting all of my favorite bets to go with and we'll just all pretty much be together talking bets in there uh when it comes to sports betting all right so without further ado let's get it greenlightdfs.com um, by the way, the weekly and the daily memberships for baseball will be available the night before or the day of opening day, all right? So right now, all that's available is the season long, but check back the, the morning of opening day, and you'll see all of our options as normal, all right? Let's get it. Starting off first, we have Yu Darvish at the top of the list going against Arizona. This is my go-to guy first and foremost, all right? This is the first guy I look at. I mean, just by far and away, he just feels really, really solid here in this one. Going against an Arizona squad that, I mean... They haven't done much to the to the lineup. You know what I'm saying? It's, they didn't improve much. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, they were struggling last season. This is game is in San Diego, which is a pitcher-friendly ballpark. You Darvish, I don't have to explain this much to why I would like you Darvish. He strikes out 35% of righties that he faces. Now, the plus side for Arizona is they do have like five lefties. They're going to have Calhoun, Marte, Peralta, Escobar, Cabrera. They're going to have some lefties in the lineup. Um... Peralta, Walker, Escobar have actually hit Yu Darvish fairly well. But Yu Darvish had a solid year last year. He looked really, really good. And against lefties, he strikes out over 26% as well. So he is a solid overall pitcher, plain and simple. He's in a pitcher-friendly ballpark. So those issues where he might give up a home run or two from time to time, that's going to be suppressed a little bit in that ballpark in San Diego. So I really like Yu Darvish here in this one. And I really like San Diego to win this game in general um, to give him some run support as well. Um, with with them going against, let me see, what pitcher are they facing? Bumgarner. Yeah, so San Diego should be able to do their thing and be able to put runs on the board to back Darvish. So I really like Darvish on this slate. Um, next up, after that, after we put in Darvish, we'll look over the other pitchers that we have on this slate. Now I have some so a few options that I, that I really like. All right, first thing I go to is I think about Kyle Hendricks going against Pittsburgh. All right, Pittsburgh strikes out over 26% of the time versus right-handed pitching. Um, it's always been a decent matchup for pitchers because Pittsburgh's just not too great. Um, at the end of the day, they have Frazier, Reynolds, Moran, Polanco, like four lefties in the lineup. They might change things up as as always. Look, this is opening day, so lineups could be different than what I'm expecting them to be. I'm literally just projecting their lineup to be a certain way, okay? So they could obviously adjust it and get more lefties in there if they need be. That's for every team that I talk about. I'm just going to talk about pretty much what I would project the starting lineup to be, and I can't guarantee that that's what it's going to be as of this moment, all right? But... Kyle Hendricks against Pittsburgh is a solid option as well. Um, the game is in Chicago, so we'll have to wait and see how the wind's looking there. Obviously, in Wrigley, the wind could be a major factor if the wind ends up being blowing in. So pay attention to that. If the wind's blowing in heavy, H Hendricks will get a big bump. If the wind's blowing out heavy, Hendricks will get a downgrade. All right, and Bats will get a big bump in that game. So keep an eye on that. Um, other guys that I have been looking at. So. Kenta Maeda against Milwaukee is in a solid spot. Milwaukee strikes out a good bit, almost 25% of the time versus righties. Uh, Maeda's done a solid job versus Milwaukee. Last year, he got 21 and 38 DraftKings points against them in both the games. Milwaukee is a hitter-ish friendly ballpark. Um, 
So that's not great, but at the end of the day, Kenta Maeda doesn't give up much hard contact. He strikes out 34% of righties that he faces, holds them to only a 172 batting average. He is absolutely elite versus righties. Obviously, Milwaukee's going to have some lefties. They've got Colton Wong, Yelich, Bradley Jr., Narvaez, Shaw. They've got some lefties in the lineup that they can, you know, use. Uh, obviously, Christian Yelich being the main one. But outside of that, none of these guys have really hit him well. Travis Shaw has hit Maeda okay. Yelich has hit him okay. But outside of that, they haven't had much success against Maeda. So I like Maeda as an option as well at 8-3. He's a solid uh, SP2 on the slate for sure. Um, another guy that I really, really like and I'm probably leaning towards as my main guy SP2 is probably going to be Tyler Glass now. All right, Tyler Glasnow is going against Miami. Now, Glasnow has a 30% strikeout rate versus lefties, 33% strikeout rate versus righties. He's facing a Miami squad that's got Dickerson and Chisholm, two lefties in the lineup. Okay, so if, in fact, this does end up staying this way, obviously things could change. But if the projected lineup does have a couple lefties in it and majority of righties for Miami, then Glasnow will be looking at a 33% strikeout rate, holding them to a 216 batting average and only a 189 ISO. Now, Dickerson, Marte, Aguilar, Anderson, these guys have hit Glasnow fairly well. But at the end of the day, Tyler Glasnow has been pitching elite. Okay, And with this game being in Miami, it's a pitcher-friendly ballpark. I like Tyler Glasnow a lot in this one. All right, so and I also think Tampa Bay is going to give him some, uh, you know, some runs, some run support. So I really like Tyler Glasnow as an option as well. Really, when I'm just brushing through this slate, those are the main guys. Obviously, we got to talk about Brandon Woodruff because Brandon Woodruff has a solid K rate. At least last year, he looked really good. 30% K rate versus lefties, 28% K rate versus righties. Holds lefties to a 227, holds righties to a 224. Um, really good at limiting hard contact versus righties. Um, he will be facing Kepler, Polanco, Arias. Um, so a few lefties in that lineup. It's not horrible. It's not an incredibly scary lineup, to be honest with you. Cruz is not in that lineup anymore. So with Kepler, Donaldson, Polanco, Sano, Arias, I mean, it could be better. All right. Kepler, Donaldson, Polanco, Sano, the top four guys are decent. They're decent hitters for sure. I'm not going to shit on them in any way. But Brandon Woodruff's got a solid K rate, and going against these guys, it is a solid position for him. All right. At the end of the day, Sano's got a 39% K rate versus righties. Okay, so, I mean, it's a good spot, all right? So, Woodruff's decent. There's a couple guys. I'll talk about a few more. Uh, let's talk about Alcantara. I was talking about him going against Tampa Bay. It's a pincher. It's plain and simple. It's a pitcher-friendly ballpark. Alcantara doesn't have a crazy high strikeout rate, but he does strike out 21% of righties that he faces. But he doesn't strike out many lefties. He only strikes out 16% of lefties he faces. Um, gives up a 331 Woba versus lefties, which that can be dangerous against Tampa Bay because they've got Lowe, Choi, Wendell, Kiermaier. They've got some lefties in that lineup. So we'll have to see what happens. But Alcantara is okay. But you, Darvish, I will go ahead and end that with you, Darvish, and Glass now are two guys that I'm really, really interested in here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at catchers. Obviously, we're not 100% on some of these guys who's starting and what's not, whatnot, but um, for the most part, you can kind of imagine pretty much. Um, let's go ahead and start with guys like Real Muto. Real Muto's got the righty-lefty matchup against Fried. Um, it's a solid situation for him because Real Muto, in 15 plate appearances versus Fried, has a 429 batting average, a 500 ISO. He has absolutely destroyed him. He has hit him very, very well. He is 5'5", and normally most of the time, depending on if I have money or not, like if I have some really good cheap pitching to choose from, then I'll spend up on some spots. But with the game being, with a game being in course, and a lot of times people will immediately gravitate towards course. I understand it. I'm not going to fault you on that, but there are two very talented pitchers in course. Marquez and Clayton Kershaw are two very solid pitchers, so I wouldn't exactly predict this game to be just crazy runs. Um, if I had to pick a side of it, I would obviously pick the Dodgers against Marquez. I wouldn't pick too much on Kershaw, but um, but yeah, so there is a game in course, so we do have some bats there if we want those guys, and Darvish and Glasnow aren't exactly cheap. Darvish is 10-4, Glasnow's 8-8, eight, eight. so I'm kind of spending on pitching here um, with this core right now that I'm building. So 
as of right now, I'm not going to really spend too much on Real Muto, but you can do worse than Real Muto for sure. It's a fantastic situation for him. He hits lefties very, very well, especially this lefty in general. All right, let's talk about Salvador Perez. Salvador Perez is going against Kyle Gibson. Um, Gibson is actually, you know, he is okay. Uh, but the wind is going to be blowing out to right at 12 miles per hour. Uh, it's a solid position. Uh, Gibson versus righties gives up a 166 ISO and a 322 Woba. Uh, not horrible, but it's a solid position for Salvador because the wind is blowing out 12 miles per hour. At least it's predicted to blow out to right. Okay, that which is not great for righties. You want you most of the time uh, players will pull the ball, so you want the wind to blow out to left for righties and out to right for right uh, lefties. But plain and simple, let's just go ahead and talk about period. Let's just talk about the guys that we really have interest in instead of going through all of these guys and just talking about not really having much interest. Salvador and Real Mudo, I have interest in them, but I really want to look at guys who have a possibility of, of really doing well at a decent uh, price. All right. So let's get into that. Let's talk about Tucker Barnhart. All right. Let's talk Tucker Barnhart at 2-4. Catcher at 2-4. Four. The wind is blowing out to center in this game, uh, projected wise, 12 miles per hour. He is going again. He's going to face Jack Flaherty, which is not a great matchup by no means. All right, by no means is this a good matchup. Flaherty is a solid, solid player. All right, he is a solid player. Obviously, you don't really want to pick on him. Okay, by no means am I saying that. But at two four, if you need the punt catcher, you can do worse than a righty lefty matchup here. It's not too bad of a matchup there. Um, some other guys that are in some solid positions here. Um, let's talk about Travis Darno. Darno for Atlanta is going against Nola. He has a two ninety three batting average versus righties. Okay, Arnod is not bad versus righties. He is not bad. Okay, on top of that, he has a 400 batting average and a 1.20 ISO, which is crazy high. It's only five plate appearances. That's why it's so high. He must have had a home run or two against him. Um, but it's a great situation for Arno. I love him. He should be batting in the core of this lineup. He's a very solid option here. Um, so he's a guy that I really, really like as well. Um, let's see. What else do we got? What other guys? JT Romuto's at the top of the list if you're looking for a home run. Outside of that, so far, Travis Darno is a solid option. Let's talk Vasquez. Let's talk Christian Vasquez. Vasquez is looking good to it says day to day. He's looking good to go for opening day. Good good to go for opening day. He's going against Means. He's got the righty lefty matchup. He has a 238 ISO versus lefties, a 341 Woba, a 254 batting average, which isn't great, but his power is looking really, really great. But he's not a super value either, 47. So he's right there around with Travis Darno at 48. All right, so none of, neither of these guys are great values, okay? Um, let's see. So nobody really sticks out big time to me when it comes to catcher. Outside of, I mean, this might possibly be a position where you either just punt with a Barnhart. As of right now, I mean, obviously when the lineups come out, we could get some really cheap guys that I'm not aware of starting that end up starting that are going to be in great spots. Maybe on the day before the opening day, I'll kind of have a better idea, and I'll, I'll you know, talk about those guys. But um, when it comes to matchup-wise, we do have Elias Diaz, if he happens to catch for Colorado, uh, righty-lefty in cores at 2-7, so obviously pay attention to that. That's okay of a situation, but... Yeah, I mean, at the top of my list at catcher, I mean, obviously the best options at catcher is going to be Real Muto. He is number one. He has a 308 batting average versus lefties, a 263 Woba, a four, uh, for, sorry, a 405 Woba, and if you're not sure, weighted on base average is what Woba is. ISO is isolated power, so how much power they hit with. The higher the ISO, the better chance for home runs. Woba, higher the Woba, the higher the chance they get on base, all right? 263 ISO 405 Woba, which is elite, both of them, and a 308 batting average versus lefties. So I really like him a lot. I really love JT Romuto against lefties. Absolutely love him at catcher. Or you just punt. You either spend up for like an Arno or a Real Muto, or you punt it and go all the way down, um, in my opinion. All right. Let's talk first base. 
we're going to go through these a little bit faster. Let's start with my boy, Freddie Freeman. Uh, you guys know I'm an Atlanta Braves fan. I'm excited for our season this year. Freddie Freeman, lefty-righty against Aaron Nola. Solid situation for Freeman. He mashes righties, 320 batting average versus righties, a 307 ISO, 455 Woba. This dude is elite. I don't have to explain too much how elite Freddie Freeman is. He is a fantastic player. I'm absolutely loving him. Um, and... I really, really like him. So uh, he is in a great spot here against Nola. All right. Bobby Dalbeck. Is Bobby Dalbeck? I think he should be good. Bobby Dalbeck should be good and should be playing. Let me find Bobby Dalbeck. There we go. He should be good to go. I just read about I'm actually looking into it right now because he hits lefties really, really well. So I'm hoping he's in this lineup for Boston. Uh, uh, let's see if I could find some news. Dalbeck is on track to be ready for opening day. There we go, at starter at first base. All right, cool. So Bobby Dalbeck, I have him projected around batting eighth, so he's not going to bat, like, huge in the order, unless, like I said, this is all just speculation. I'm not 100% sure, but Dalbeck is in a very solid situation here. He's solid versus lefties. It's a small sample size, though, all right? Bobby Dalbeck's numbers are a small sample size, okay? But so far he has a 296 in his young career. He has a 296 batting average versus lefties, a 444 ISO and a 432 Woba. Delbeck is a solid option, all right? Let's talk Reese Hoskins, my boy. Reese Hoskins at 5K, right? Anytime Hoskins goes against lefties, I mean, immediately when Philly's going against lefties, I immediately think of a few players. Andrew McCutcheon, Reese Hoskins, those guys mash lefties. They're both in play here as well. Um, Real Mudo as well, my bad. But Reese Hoskins, 290 batting average, 326 ISO, 457 Woba. Reese Hoskins as well as in a solid matchup here against Fried. Um, another guy that I really, really like is going to be CJ Krohn. CJ Krohn in cores. Now, uh, he's going against Clayton Kershaw, Kershaw. So regardless of these numbers I'm about to give you, Clayton Kershaw is an elite pitcher, and he could very well hold him in check. All right, so, but at the end of the day, the numbers are very solid for a guy who's pretty cheap in cores. 3-8 for a guy in cores is pretty solid. He's projected to hit around the core of the lineup. I have him around fifth or so. So that's a solid spot for him at only 3-8. He is facing the lefty Clayton Kershaw. That is not a great matchup. But against lefties, he has a 307 batting average, 307 ISO, 410 Woba. He hits lefties very, very well. So CJ Cron is in a fantastic situation here. All right. Let's stay around that price range. Let's go Trey Mancini. Let's talk Trey Mancini going against Eduardo Rodriguez. All right. Trey is in a great spot. He's always been solid versus lefties. 387 Woba, 261 ISO, 277 batting average in general versus lefties. It's a solid position for Trey at 3.9. Um, he's definitely a guy that I'll be having some interest in here. Um, DraftKings has him as facing against Eovaldi. I thought it was Eduardo Rodriguez getting that start. Hold on. Let me check real quick. I guess Eovaldi is starting for Eduardo. Hold on. Okay, he was named the starter. Okay, so Eovaldi will be starting. He's a right-hander, so that's not as good. So I take that back. Mancini is not in play. If Eduardo's not pitching, the lefty, I'm not in on Mancini as much for sure. All right, so uh, let's move on. Let's see who else we got here. Anybody else stick out to me? G-Man Choi. Oh, he won't be in there. He won't. He won't make it, I don't think. Yeah, he's going to start the season off on the injury reserve. Um, Nate Lowe is an option. Really? Oh, okay, wait. Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana is a guy I really want to talk about. Carlos Santana at home in Kansas City going against Texas. Um, it's in Kansas City. The wind is blowing out to right at 12 miles per hour. Carlos Santana is a switch hitter, so he'll be batting left against Kyle Gibson. I really love Carlos Santana here in this one. He's got a fantastic matchup. He has a 750 ISO versus Kyle Gibson in, in the small sample size that he's faced him. He has a 337 Woba versus righties. Solid position for Carlos Santana at 3-6. Or you can go Kron. And just hope he gets a hold of one against Kershaw because it is in cores. That's a solid option as well. 
Um, and then you have uh, like the Freddie Freeman and stuff at the top at first base. All right, let's go to second base. The core is over here on second base. Let's go ahead and talk about Brandon Lowe. He had a really good season last year. Lowe is in a fantastic position here at 4'6", going against Alcantara. He has a 240 ISO and a 355 Woba versus right-handed pitching, so he's a solid option at 4'6". Mike Moustakis against Flaherty. Mike Moustakis for Cincinnati against Flaherty, lefty-righty. He's got a 250 ISO. So if you're just looking for a home run possibility, Mike Moustakis could definitely get it to you. And like I said, it's project. Well, the wind's projected to blow out to center at 12 miles per hour, but it's projected, so pay attention to that. That could obviously change. But Mike Moustakis with the wind blowing out, lefty-righty with a 250 ISO versus righties, you could do worse than that. Um... Who else do we have that really sticks out? Rufnet Odor has home run upside, but he's 3-7. Uh, Kettle Marte. Now, this is pretty crazy. Let me see. Kettle Marte. Look at this. Kettle Marte. Wait a second. Let me see if he's okay. Oh, no. He should be good to go. Kettle Marte looks like he should be good to go for opening day, at least of right now I'm imagining he's so. Kettle Marte is a fantastic option in the, on the slate, okay? I mean, I get it. We're going to have you Darvish or we're going to love you Darvish. You Darvish is a fantastic pitcher. He's in a great spot. But Kettle Marte at the end of the day has a 319 batting average versus righties, 206 ISO, 389 Woba. Plain and simple, he gets on base and he's only two. Seven, So that is pretty crazy. I'm going to go ahead and put him in here because that price is ridiculous for him. That is pretty cheap for him. When we're talking cheap hitters for today, he definitely sticks out as a really, really good one. Ozzy Albies is in play, I guess, at 5K, but really low. Marte. You could go Keston Hira against Maeda. Hira has a 277 ISO and a 379 Woba versus righties. So hits righties very well. Uh, Colton Wong is an option. Colton Wong has a 290 batting average versus righties. He could get on base pretty well. Um, Kike Hernandez, one of my favorite plays. Kike Hernandez is one of my favorite plays for Boston um, on this slate. He's got the righty-lefty matchup. We know he hits lefties pretty damn good. He's also going to be leading off for this team. So a leadoff batter at only 3K, righty-lefty matchup, yes, Sir, so he's another guy that I really, really like that I want to make sure I lock in for you guys. Um, that's about it. You got Tommy Edmond, who's a decent option. But let's go ahead and move on. Let's move on to third base, all right? Third base. Now, Bobby Dahlback can also be played here, obviously. Um, you have K. Brian Hayes, who had a huge season last year. Hayes had a huge, solid season last year, especially towards the end of the year. He's going against Hendricks, who he has a 429 ISO against and a 407 Woba. He also has hit righties very, very well. 333 batting average versus righties, a 302 ISO, and a 443 Woba. So he is solid. Um, he is a solid option. Uh, Eugenio Suarez smashes righties with a 313 ISO and a 384 Woba. Smashes. Same thing with Josh Donaldson at 4.5. Um, Mike Moustakis we already talked about. Alec Bohm, if he ends up in the lineup for Philly, uh, he will be a solid option as well. Um, he's got a 270 batting average, 366 Woba, and a 243 ISO versus left-handed pitching. So he's got the righty-lefty matchup. Um, outside of that, really, my core here at third base, I would probably say, if you want to get like low-owned route, because I think not many people will probably be on him, I really like Cabrian Hayes, obviously has some upside. Eugenio Suarez in only 4K. He's facing a tough pitcher in Flaherty. Um, but core-wise... I would probably say, yeah, third base is a tough one, man. Who would I be? So Mike Moustakis sticks out as a solid option, and then Suarez and Hayes and Dahlbeck. All right, I'll talk about those guys first. All right, let's do shortstop. Going over to shortstop, we've been going for, what, 24 minutes? All right, shortstop, obviously. You have Trevor Story as an option. Um, going against Clayton Kershaw. Not a great matchup, but he's been okay versus Kershaw. He's got a 
375 batting average versus Kershaw. He also is a lefty masher, certified bona fide lefty masher. 322 batting average, 298 ISO, 432 Woba. He is a masher of lefties. I don't have to explain too much of that. He's a great option. Xander Bogarts. Love Xander against the means. All right. So righty lefty matchup against means. He has a 320 batting average, another lefty masher, 320 batting average, 390 Woba. Fantastic spot for Bogarts. Mondesi had a breakout season last year. Great season. He was stealing bases left and right and really found some power last year. He was really hitting with power. I mean, he ended the year 30, 32, 25, 24. I mean, the dude was ridiculous. Ridiculous, And he is a very solid option against Kyle Gibson. He's got the lefty-righty matchup. He's got stolen base upside, obviously. The wind is blowing out here to right at 12 miles per hour, so he's going to be batting on the left side. He could definitely pull one out of the ballpark with the wind blowing out, but obviously when it comes to the weather, guys, I'm talking about what's projected. Um, obviously, that's not set in stone. All right, so those are the core guys. Story, Bogarts, Mondesi. Obviously, those are my favorite options um, to go with at shortstop all right outfield we've got a solid list of players to go through here um let's start it out with let's see jd martinez let's talk about jd martinez you guys know me i always talk about jd martinez when he's facing a lefty 350 batting average 369 iso 478 woba jd martinez is a another guy who's just a certified baller okay plain and simple especially versus lefties and he's only four three like, you're getting an elite batter who has double dong upside for 4-3, which seems way too cheap, in my opinion, against a pitcher that is not so great. He's mediocre. All right, so the righty-lefty matchup, 350 batting average, ridiculous. Love J.D. Martinez. He's the first guy I wanted to speak on. Um, who else really mashes in a spot? this spot? Now, you have a guy like Hunter Renfro as well. Now, Hunter Renfro's up and down. Like, he's going to get you a zero or get you a home run. But Hunter Renfro's got the righty-lefty matchup. He doesn't have a great average. Like I said, he's going to hit a home run or do nothing. But he does have a 356 ISO and a 373 Woba. So the 356 ISO is the key to pay attention to here. Because in MLB DFS, really, you just need your pitchers to not get blown up. And then your, bat your batters to just do their best to get on base and score some points and not just dud out and get zero for you. All right? And you really want a home run. If you can get a home run from these guys, you're look sitting pretty. Especially if you can get like a double dong from a low-owned batter, you're locked pretty much. He's a, it's a great spot for you. So um, Hunter Renfro is a solid option. I wanted to speak on him. Uh, Got to talk about Ronald Acuna. Come on now. I got to talk about all my Braves players. Ronald Acuna going against Nola. He has a 297 ISO and a 408 Woba versus righties. Um, he also has been pretty damn good versus Nola. 318 batting average versus him, 466 Woba, 318 ISO. So not too bad. Nola is not a pitcher I normally love to pick on. So he's not a guy I'm excited to pick on. I would definitely prefer J.D. Martinez, especially with Acuna being 6K. Like J.D. is damn near locked here. Love J.D. Martinez with the righty-lefty. I have to talk about... Randy. I'm not even going to try to say it. A Rosarina. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had baseball, so a Rosarina. There we go. Okay, so Randy is in a great spot going against Alcantara, all right? 306 average versus righties last year. 360 ISO, 437 Woba. He had a fantastic season last year. He is a guy you definitely want to keep an eye on. At 5'3", he's priced at an elite range. J.D. Martinez is a 1,000 less, which is just ridiculous. I keep mentioning J.D. because that's just crazy. Um, who else do I want to talk about? Who's too cheap? Solaire. Solaire is a double dong potential anytime he steps to the plate. We know that. He's going against Kyle Gibson. He's got a 305 ISO and a 388 Woba versus righties. Solaire is a fantastic option. Then you got the wind blowing out to right at 12 miles per hour. So the wind blowing out. A Solaire at only 2.8, the upside is there, so I'm going to lock him in as well. So I've got some value bats um, in here that I really, really like, and that main, most of the time when I'm talking about like a core of guys, I really want to get you guys the values because spending up for the studs, yeah, I mean, you know, guys like JT Romuto, he's going to be, he's a solid batter. He's most of the time going to do well in a situation like this. Uh, paying up for the cores, bats, and stuff like that, you should be okay there, um, but it is baseball, high vol, whatever you want to, whatever the word is. But the the chances of a guy getting a zero is there. Like a guy like Mike Trout could go out and strike out four times. Okay? Even Mike Trout, the best player in the world, could do that. But all you got to do is just, you know, look at the situations, put your guys in the best situations to succeed, 
and hope for the best pretty much. But Solaire is a solid option at 2.8 as well. He's another value guy that's in a solid position. Um, let's talk Max Kepler. Max Kepler from Minnesota. He's got a 276 ISO versus righties. He's 3.8, not too bad. David Dahl. It's another guy I really want to talk about. Another value. I'm just going to talk value guys in here. I'm just going to lock value guys in here just to have these guys on your mind to open up your lineups when it comes to opening day. But David Dahl, obviously this isn't a – I'm not like building an entire lineup. I'm just plugging in value guys so you can see them and keep an eye on them while I'm going. Um, David Dahl is in a really good spot here. He's got the righty-lefty matchup against Keller in Kansas City. He is – P playing for Texas now. He's batting around sixth or so. He's projected. He's got the lefty righty. He's got a 231 ISO versus righty. He's a 359 Woba. He's a solid value. He's only 2.5, man. So the potential that you have getting a guy like that is is definitely there. Um, <clears throat> you've got a guy like Gregory Polanco who could get you a stolen base at only 2.9. Let's talk Andrew McCutcheon because I talked about him earlier. And honestly, there's a lot of – like I'm gravitating naturally to a lot of Philly guys, honestly. Philly might be a team that I really want some exposure to on this slate because naturally I'm just going to a lot of them because they're in great spots. They hit lefties very, very well, and they're solid priced, at least with McCutcheon at 3.9. McCutcheon's only 3.9, should be up there leading off. 271 batting average versus lefties, 386 Woba. McCutcheon has, is known for hitting lefties pretty damn well. Um, he hasn't been great versus Max, I mean, he at all, but righty-lefty matchup, cheap, in, in a team stack that I'm definitely interested in, I'm for sure interested. Tavares, Leody Tavares for Texas, projected to lead off now that Shinsu Chu is overseas playing. Um, he doesn't have fantastic numbers. He doesn't, like, pop off the screen. He's got some okay stolen base potential. Um, but he's got the lefty-righty matchup leading off with the wind blowing out at only 2-9. So getting a leadoff batter at that price is always good. Plain and simple. All right? Getting a cheap guy leading off is always a decent option. So I definitely like him. He's one of my favorite values as well. And that's about it. Obviously, I got to talk about Joey Gallo because of the home run upside that he possesses. Joey Gallo's got the righty-lefty matchup against Keller. The wind's blowing out to right at 12. That couldn't be any better for Gallo. It's setting up fantastic for him. Only 3-6, projected to bat fourth. So Joey Gallo is definitely a, a high upside player that you could also go with as well. I've been hearing he's been having a great spring training as well. So, Also, one last guy I'll talk about and then I'll head out is David Peralta. David Peralta's got the lefty-righty matchup. I'm not trying to get exposure to too much Arizona. I already think Marte is way too cheap at 2-7. Um, I love Darvish, though, so I'm not trying to like stack up Arizona or get too much involvement in that um, But because uh, I really, really do like Darvish. But there's a few Arizona guys that definitely stick out to me here because they're batting in solid parts of the lineup, and because they're going against a tough pitcher in Darvish, their prices are extremely low. But Peralta hits righties well just like Marte does. He's got a 290 average versus righties, which is very, very solid. All right? So that's about it, y'all. That's your first look at the slate. Um, I'm excited for this, man. Greenlightdfs.com. Join the squad. We've been going for over 30 minutes. I went position by position and kind of just brushed over some options. I will come back and do a video the day before opening day or the morning of opening day and give you guys like a brushed up high five. Obviously, I didn't really do a high five. I just locked in like my favorite value plays. These are my favorite value plays on the slate as well as Tavares, who I wasn't able to fit in here. But um, there's about six solid value – yeah, I'd say about six solid value bats so far um, on the slate in the early look that uh, definitely make being able to get you Darvish and Glass now possible because with these values, I'm able to go a guy like JT Romuto in such an amazing position um, and still have 47.66 remaining average, so plenty of money. But But like I said, I'm not building a lineup here. By no means do I think you should lock all these guys in and just figure it out and be good. This is just a first look. Uh, at the slate three days before opening day, four days even before opening day. So it's just an early look to get you guys hyped up for baseball and get you kind of prepared and ready. Um, but yeah, I love Real Muto. So I love the fact we have some value options and I love Darvish and Glass now as my favorite pitchers on the slate. And if you're playing value pitchers, <clears throat> if you're one in the save it pitcher, Hendricks got a, a solid strikeout rate at only 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, he really sticks out as a solid value option as well as Kenta Maeda at 8 3 and Woodruff at 8K. These are high strikeout pitchers right here in this range, in this mid range. So if you want to go down from Darvish, 
to one of these guys, I understand it. But Darvish is in an elite spot, so I just want you to be aware of that. All right, thank you guys for joining me as always. I will see y'all later on uh, in the week. I'll see y'all. Opening day is Thursday, so I'll see you Thursday morning or Wednesday night for the uh, high five. So let's get it. I'm out.